What's going on guys, this is Marvel Maniac, and if you enjoyed the content of my videos, make sure to hit the like button, and if you're watching on YouTube, to also hit the subscribe button, so you can help decide which direction the content of the channel goes in the foreseeable future. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Marvel Maniac. Today's video is going to showcase a god that I'm sure a lot of you maniacs out there are familiar with, and if you're not, then that's okay too, because by the end of this video, you'll know everything there is to know about him, if not, almost everything. But before I continue with the video, I would like to make a quick announcement. I would first like to apologize for not being able to post anything in the past couple of months. Unfortunately, my laptop gave out on me, and also I just don't have a good enough budget to be able to make more videos on a consistent basis. I do want to get to a point where I can drop more and more videos every week. I'm currently working on saving up some money to purchase an actual computer to be able to make more videos with better quality. I do want you guys to know I'm opening a donation box and anything from you will help me achieve that goal faster. You are not obligated to donate if you don't want to. This is a free service that I'm providing because this is something I really, really enjoy. I do, however, request that you guys like, share, and comment on the videos. If there's a specific character you guys want me to do or make a video on something other than a character that relates to the Marvel Universe, please feel free to drop a comment and I'll do my best to make something for everyone. I would love it if you guys can give me some feedback on my videos and help guide me in the right direction to make amazing videos for you guys to enjoy. Now, most of you guys are wondering who this mysterious god is that makes the very skies tremble in his presence and commands this mystical hammer Mjolnir to protect the Nine Realms. Well, he is the Prince of Asgard, God of Thunder, he is none other than Thor. Born to the King of Asgard, Odin Borson, and the Earth Goddess Gaia, Thor has enhanced longevity, augmented by the Golden Apples of Eden. He also possesses superhuman strength, speed, agility, durability, and immunity to most diseases. He grew up in Asgard under Odin and trained in his footstep to one day lead Asgard. Besides Odin, his stepmother Frigga and his adopted brother Loki are the only family he knows, alongside his best friend Sif, Baldur, and the Warriors Three. Throughout his youth, Thor tested his limits on dangerous missions and became worthy of his greatest weapon and his closest ally, Mjolnir, using it to save Sif from the death goddess Hela. Now what is Mjolnir, you ask? Well, Mjolnir is an enchanted hammer forged from Uru metal, which has power over storms and can generate energy blasts known as anti-force. Thor uses this hammer to summon rain, wind, lightning, and thunder though he has also been known to produce lightning from his bare hands, which a lot of you guys might have witnessed if you've seen Thor Ragnarok, which by the way is a great movie and I suggest you watch it if you haven't. Now while Mjolnir can manipulate weather pattern, it extends godhood and many other abilities to its commander. When spun, the mallet can allow Thor to fly, hover, and even open portals to other dimensions and realms. When thrown, it acts as a sort of a boomerang, destroying all things or beings in its path before returning to its owner. Now you're probably wondering if anyone picks up this hammer, they can possess all these amazing abilities. Well, the answer to that is yes and no. Yes, all these abilities can be obtained by simply picking up the hammer. No, it is not that easy to just pick up the hammer. You see, in order to pick up the hammer, one has to be worthy. Whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, he shall possess the power of Thor. Stan Lee, one of the main creators of the Marvel Universe, attempted to pick up the hammer and failed. If the creator of the universe, Stan Lee, couldn't pick up the hammer, I don't think we should worry about it falling into the wrong hand. Now, there has been a few that have been worthy of wielding the hammer. Thor, in his continued travels, encountered the infamous alien Battle Ray Bill, who taught Thor to be a demon and seized Thor's hammer, proving himself worthy to wield it. Because they were so evenly matched, Odin created Stormbreaker, a new hammer to be used by Bill. Thor joined forces with Bill to help battle demons serving the fire demon Surtur that threatened Bill's people. It was just after this encounter that S.H.I.E.L.D. director Nick Fury helped Thor establish a new identity and helped encourage him to keep in touch with humanity as Sigurd Jarlson construction work. Then there's Jane Foster, a human nurse that Donald Blake falls in love with, often finds herself wrapped up in Thor's orbit, whether romantically or as an ally. She also proves to be worthy of Mjolnir and even takes on the mantle of Thor. The hammer not only wields destructive powers, but it also has the power to build, and Thor uses it to consecrate treaties and bless weddings. 
Now, where there are gods, there are devils and those who sit above in shadow and are a consortium of wicked gods that feed off the energies resulting from Asgard's repeated destruction, which is known as Ragnarok or the Twilight of the Gods. The consortium recreates Asgard after each Ragnarok, resulting in an endless loop of creation, destruction, and rebirth. Now, we can't start off a listing of enemies to Asgard, especially to Thor, without the one and only Loki. An Asgardian menace forever seeks to sow chaos out of his jealousy towards his adopted brother Thor. Whether he is trying to steal the golden apples of Eden or posing as Odin, he's rarely an ally. Then there's Hela, the goddess of death, and Thor's niece who is best known for stealing mortal souls. And I know what you guys are thinking, yes, in the movies she is portrayed as a sister, but in the comics, she is Loki's daughter. Anyway, one time Thor faces her, she scars him across his face, she also punishes him for releasing her souls and curses him so that he could not heal his injuries, but also not die. The Celestials are the omnipotent judges of all the gods, are limitless in their power, and often serve as foils to the Asgardian royalty. Cornella, the Norm Queen and ancestral Asgardian enemy, possesses powerful mystic talisman called Normstone. These stones are semi-sentient and are known to refuse the commands of unworthy holders, just as Mjolnir does so. She has used these many times in her battles with the god of Thor. There's also Surtur, a fire demon who attacks Asgard so that he might claim the eternal flame and complete the forging of the sword Twilight. He proves to be a menace time and time again for Asgard and Earth, eternally stuck in a battle with Odin. Then there's the Observing Man, Amora the Enchantress, Scourge the Executioner, Ego the Living Planet, Demon Lord Mephisto, Mangog, Malekith the Accursed, and many more who poses a threat to Thor and Asgard. Thor has traveled across the realms battling all enemies of Asgard and Earth, including the Olympian demigod Hercules. Though both Thor and Hercules fought on opposite sides during the Norwegian-Greek War in the year 1000, they eventually teamed up and remained friendly rivals. It was this time on Earth leading the Vikings that began the Norwegian myth of the God of Thunder. In one iteration of Asgard, Thor's thirst for battle led him to break an Asgardian treaty with the Frost Giant, leading Odin to punish him. Odin sent him to Earth as Dr. Donald Blake. When Blake discovered that he is the Norse God of Thunder known as Thor and is reunited with Mjolnir, he chose to divide his time between his life as an ordinary human doctor and an immortal god. As Blake, he fell in love with the human Jane Foster. When he requested permission from Odin to marry her, Odin refused and told Thor he wasn't allowed to share his true identity with her. His affinity for Earth has caused many arguments and rifts between him and his father. When Loki took advantage of his brother's love of Earth, Thor sought the help of Iron Man, the Hulk, Ant-Man, and the Wasp to ward off the Asgardian menace. His trickery led Thor and these superpowered individuals to found the superhero group called the Avengers. Balancing his dual lives, Thor continued to pursue Foster. Foster was granted temporary goddess status, but Odin required proof of her worth. He set impossible tasks for her on Asgard, but she was unable to cope and return to Earth, eventually marrying a man named Keith. After this disappointing decision, Thor reunited with his friend Sif to share a romance. Thor continued as Asgard's greatest defender fighting off terrible foes such as the evil Mangok, who disguised himself as Odin. During his reign, he bested Thor along with his allies, the Warrior Three. Thor ultimately defeated Mangog. When the Casket of Ancient Winters was unleashed on Earth, it ushered forth Surtur and the cyclical end of Asgard known as Ragnarok. Surtur went to war with Asgard, and Thor joined Beta Ray Bill, the Avengers, and the Fantastic Four to stop Surtur. Loki joined the fight, battling alongside Thor and Odin. Odin casted himself and Surtur from Asgard to seal the realms from his menace, placing them in eternal conflict. The following battles found Thor up against Hela the goddess of death, who disfigured and cursed him with the inability to heal his injuries. Loki saw this moment as another opportunity to defeat Thor and set Thor's enemies against him, including the Observing Man, the Midgard Serpent, and the Destroyer. Thor bested these foes and confronted Hela in Hell to lift the curse. Hela in order to save herself to heal Thor's injuries and remove the spell. Just as one death goddess was defeated, another surfaced in the form of Seth the Death God, who held Odin captive and Thor's effort to free his father, Surtur, followed. Then Odin temporarily granted Thor his Odin power, helping him to triumph over Surtur. After these war, an acquaintance of Jarlson's, Eric Masterson, aided Thor on a mission but was nearly killed. To save him, Odin merged him with Thor, but Thor's new guise as Eric was problematic. 
since he was a real man and much more complicated than Blake, often his life interfered with Thor's adventures. Alas, Eric filled in for Thor when Thor became exiled in the back of their collective mind, and even faced Loki in battle. Eric, however, was not the last human that Thor merged with. Jake Olsen was the next mortal to play host to Thor, but his body proved to be less than worthy for the might of the god. Break the Ragnarok cycle and foil those who sit above in shadow, Thor let Asgard fall, allowing himself to presumably die, his demise proved false, though, when it was revealed that he was actually alive, he was sent to a limbo-like dimension. During the superhero civil war, Tony Stark was desperate for Thor's assistance and cloned Thor from one of his hairs to create a cybernetic version of him known as Ragnarok. The clone lacked moral sense, though, and became an enemy of the Avengers. When Thor arrived to limbo, it expelled his Donald Blake aspect back to Earth, Mjolnir also returned to Earth, so Blake retrieved it and then convinced Thor to come back from Limbo to establish Asgard. Thor did so by moving it to its new home hovering over Broxton, Oklahoma. There, Thor discovered Iron Man's Thor clone and the implementation of the Superhuman Registration Act. He then departed from the Avengers and devoted himself to restoring the slain Asgardians from Ragnarok. During his restoration process, Loki schemed and mimicked Sif, who was trapped in the dying Rose Chamber's body. Loki drew out Baldur, a prospective ruler and son to Odin, and revived Bor, Odin's father. Unaware of who Bor was, Thor slayed him, breaking Mjolnir in the process. Loki called Thor a traitor, and Baldur exiled him from Asgard. Thor then turned to Doctor Strange to help him restore Mjolnir. It was bonded to Thor's life force so that any injury to the hammer would affect Thor. It was then that Thor learned of Sif's fate, allowing him to restore her to her body. Sif, the Warriors 3, and Thor then chose to settle in exile in Broxton before Asgard was finally restored to its own realm. Thor Odinson eventually became unworthy of Mjolnir, and his former lover Jane Foster took up the mantle of Thor in his steed. Possessing all his godlike powers via the hammer, she battled as the goddess of thunder. The Odinson, along with his new weapon, the Battle of Jarnbajarn, departed to fight across the realms on his own. went to Jane! Nay, Jane took the hammer. This can't be happening! You know what they say, Beyond. Whoever is worthy will possess the power of Thor! You bested me. But my experiment's not done! Yes, it is. Curse you, Avengers! When Jane Foster's cancer-ridden body could no longer take the rigors of godhood, she chose to battle a rampaging Mangog one last time in an effort to save Asgard from total destruction. In her final battle, she managed to defeat the monster and allowed the Asgardian people time to escape the destruction. Jane Foster then stepped down from the mantle, allowing the God of Thunder to serve as Thor once again. <laughs>